Today we're going to be talking about uh, robotic deburring with your OB7. So here we have a general layout. We'll kind of go over each piece, uh, starting with how to bring parts into the robot or how to present parts to the robot. Here we just have a plate with some holes cut into it that are evenly spaced out so that when we set up the pick for our robot, we can set up as an evenly spaced grid and now we can have uh, 45 parts without any uh, human interaction needed. Going to the deburring, kind of main uh, point of this, the deburring stage. On here, we have our deburring stage with the motor on top. Um, that's going to allow a certain amount of compliance. So as we deburr, the motor is going to move to get around strange angles, or if it's a sloppy, sloppily taut job that may not go evenly across a wheel, this will be able to compensate for that and kind of clean up anything. Um, it's also going to allow a, a constant pressure on the part um, that you're driving into with the wheel. Um, going back from there, we have our regrip station. You can see back there. That's just going to allow us to pick this part up, um, first deburr uh, one side, and um, then move over and actually deburr the other side of the part with the other uh, threads on this part, for instance. Um, so that's just a nice thing to do so you can still have a really uh, strong grasp on the part. Uh, so you can design your fingers for that, but you can still reach different points on the part and deburr the whole part. Um, as needed, uh, which kind of leads me into the other kind of gripping uh, element to this whole setup is our gripper and the custom fingers on it. Um, on these fingers, we have two V grooves uh, cut into it, and those are going to actually better locate the part and lock it in there. So we're actually grasping around the part or around uh, part of the pipe here so that we this part's not going to be pulled out of the gripper as it's going against the wheel and deburring the part. Um, it's a good way, a uh, good thing to shoot for with any deburring is having a good encompassing grip. So, you know, you don't want to just rely on friction. Uh, you want to be able to grab in and around that part so you have a nice strong grasp. Um, yeah, that's the general overview. The last piece, you know, of course, is our robot on top of our table. Uh, the robot you guys are all pretty familiar with probably by this time. Um, but the table this is all sitting on is actually our max table, which you can put a regular stretch or um, regular OB7 on top of. Um, in this case, we have a stretch just so we can reach everything. Uh, but the table allows everything registered to the robot. It's all on one big spot. So um, you can actually stage parts and deburr all here in this one station. Uh, and with that, we can kind of watch the actual process of it deburring. Let go on the tablet there and we'll watch as it goes down for our first part. And here you can see we're gonna deburr uh, the first um, lead-in thread on our part. And that's what's going to go across the wheel. And it's going to actually spin as it does that. So we get an even deburr across the whole thing. And then it's going to transition to the actual threads, not just that lead thread. And it's going to again spin into that wheel as it uh, hits each thread, each top of each thread. And this one's gonna actually repeat a couple times. Now sometimes this takes a couple spins. You know, with your J7, you have uh, plus or minus 540 degrees of rotation. So you can rotate uh, 1080 degrees. So quite a few spins there across the wheel itself. You can see here it's taking it over to the regrip station, which again is going to allow us to change how we grasp this part and allow us to do the of course, second op almost, uh, or second part of this L shaped part, do those threads down there. You can kind of see how the motor moves just a touch um, to allow a consistent pressure onto the part as we deburr it. Just like the first side of this part, we're going to do the lead in, then the top of the threads. And again, we're spinning into that to, uh, to get a consistent finish across the whole part. And having that seventh axis allows us to get in all these crazy positions and reach all the edges we need to on the part. Take it back to the regrip station so that we can get back in the original orientation we had and place it 
in the uh, grid once again as a finished part now. And there we'll pause it, but you can imagine it going through the rest of this grid, all 45 parts. Things to kind of remember when uh, you want to set up your own deburring cell. Uh, one, um, a good encompassing grasp. That's what we have with our fingers here on our gripper. Uh, two, if you have cylindrical parts like this, being able to spin across that wheel is pretty nice. It's going to give you a very consistent deburr. Um, three, if you need a regrip station, uh, they're not too hard to build. Uh, pretty much any machine shop is capable of doing something like that. And then um, kind of the deburr stage here that we're kind of presenting, um, it's going to allow us a consistent, um, easily taught deburring setup um, that's going to be able to compensate for wheel wear over time or any uh, sloppy movements that you may have taught the arm.